Uh, thank you very much. It's a really great opportunity for us to be standing here to present some of the awesome work done by the AMD Triton team. And uh, this uh, talk is structured roughly in two components, which I will cover some of the major features we have been able to add uh, in the past year or so, and also like talk a little bit about the things we are going to work on in the next phase. And uh, due to that, the performance we are able to achieve for much more and attention. And then Li Xun will zoom in on a few selected optimizations, as Bert said, that uh, particularly interesting for the current uh, GPU generation we have in this NER, MI300 series, which is like a chiplet design, which is, might be quite different than previous you would see on other GPU architectures. Um, so I think uh, regarding functionality and the status side, the most uh, thrilling part that I want to share is basically AMD GPU is now one of the official supported backend in Triton since Triton 3.0. Um, that is incorporating a lot of features and the functionalities. Uh, functionality wise, basically we are able to support various kind of like AMD GPU metrics core intrinsics. They have different kind of like power and uh, kind of instruction implementations if you are thinking about how to get the best performance. And data type wise, we are able to cover like various kind of data types, uh, including AMD specific IP8. And some of the integer types we are also kind of pushing on for quantization purposes. Uh, and of course, there is kind of passes you would expect uh, for performant uh, metamor and attention cogeneration. Um, beyond just like the core compiler functionality, we are also investing kind of like in other parts to make like Triton easy and uh, good for developers, uh, including important support like via Rock Tracer, which I uh, currently talked about in the morning. And then uh, we, submit, we trimmed down the dependency stories for better releasing stories that uh, library-wise, we device side, we only need OKCML and OKML. And then we are reusing the like uh, runtime library from HIP uh, from Touch right now. Basically, we have good support for AMD Instinct GPUs and Radeon GPUs. So um, that's like the functionality side. Uh, for performance-wise, basically, uh, we have all this kind of like both side of performance pushes, uh, including compute side and the memory system side. Uh, compute side, you are able to select various kind of intrinsics that has uh, different implications, especially like, for example, if you instruction scheduling, whether you are able to overlap certain category instructions. And uh, some of the other like attention side, whether the special instructions has like issue dynamics that need to be considered. Memory side is the major part that actually we push heavily on because of the chiplet design again, uh, EMI 300. Uh, we are able to ease, also work on some th something for the next, including trying to global load directly into MFMA layout uh, to bypass uh, LDS or shared memory if it is not that useful. And looking into, for example, using buffer uh, intrinsics that has out of bound support and uh, kind of also simplifies the index execution story. And uh, various controls for cache, which is super important for uh, large language model inference nowadays because it's like more uh, a streaming, skinny metamor problem. And then, of course, all these kind of typical things you would expect from software power planning and the instruction scheduling, we are also pushing on that to further close the gap between the Triton implementation versus the library's implementation, which can tightly control all the instructions issued to the GPU. So with all that, basically, for Metmo, we are able to be comfortably beyond uh, 500 telephotos for like the good-shaped Metmos, and for FP8, um, like it's beyond one teraflops, uh, one thousand teraflops. And uh, if you look at the shapes, some of the shapes, like if it is more friendly to the GPU, we can achieve even better performance. Um, this is done on MI300 with row major A and the column major B. Uh, it's using our kind of performance re uh, reference kernels. Um, so of, of course, there are more cases to cover. This is assuming one of the cases here. Similar stories for attention, basically. Um, we are able to achieve kind of good performance comparative to the uh, library implementations beyond 500 if the problem size is large. Of course, there are also various other cases that uh, we need to support. The goal next step is basically to border to make actually all various cases in good shapes. 
So um, that's basically the first part. Um, and the next, uh, Li Xuan was me on some of the selected optimizations, um, particularly interesting for MI300. First two is like more focusing on the memory system side, uh, which uh, due to the triplet design, it might not be that trivial to get good usage of them. And then the third is a stream K, which is also particularly, it's a general, gen general algorithm, but it's particularly interesting for uh, AMD in the sense because we have this 304 CU design. Here you go. Thank you. Okay, so uh, let's zoom into the optimizations. So the first one is about triplet friendly PID remapping stuff. Uh, the MI200 has a monolithic architecture, meaning that the GPU has one GCD and it has its own L2 cache and HBM. Uh, I'm a, uh, MI300 things are different. So the GPU has eight XEDs and each XED has its own L2 cache and HBM. Uh, let's take a memo example. So on MI200, right, the first four PID will load one row from A and four columns from B. Um, since they can share the L2 cache, so they don't need to reload the first row of A for all of the PIDs. So as a result, uh, they only need to load 40 tiles to do the computation. On IMI 300, the four PIDs are mapped to four different XEDs, and they do not share the L2 cache. As a result, all of them need to load the first row of A, and uh, leading to 64 tiles to be loaded for the computation. To solve this problem, we do a PID remapping so that PIDs working on contiguous tiles can be mapped to the same XED so that they can share their L2 cache. This is easily done in Triton at the Python level and we can see in some cases up to 10% performance improvement. The second one is about instruction scheduling at TTG IR level. So I know there are several talks about software pipelining. I'm gonna talk about something different. So on the left-hand side is the TTGIR of the loop after the, the pipeline pass for, a, for example, memo kernel. So as you can see, the result of the TT load are used at the end of the loop so that the memory latency is overlapped with compute, uh, the TT dot. On the right-hand side is the generated AMD GC in assembly code. So the two TT loads become eight global load DOR times four instructions. The two local loads become 24 DS read instructions, and the two local store become 8 DS write instructions. The dot becomes 128 MFMA instructions, which is partitioned into two parts. The first 66 instructions go with, go with the DS read. The remaining 62 MFMA instructions go with the DS write. As I mentioned before, um, the memory latency of, of TT load is overlapped with, with, with the compute thanks to the pipeliner. However, the memory, the instruction issue latency is not hidden because we issue all the eight global loads back to back, which congests the memory, the memory system um, so that it can take up to one, 100 cycles to issue one global load instruction. And the problem becomes even worse when the K dimension is 4K or 8K and the block, block, block key size is uh, 64. And here's why. So the L1 cache has four sets or four banks and the cache line size is 128 bytes. If the stride of the non-K dimension of the tensor is a multiple of five tile bytes, all the global loads for the current tile will map to the same bank, which uh, will where, uh, which will cause a L2, uh, L1 cache hotspot, and it can take up to 500 cycles to issue a single global instruction. So the solution to this problem is to not issue all the global loads at once. So uh, in this case, we schedule the second TT load after the two local, after the two local loads, um, so that we can achieve A, separate the two local loads sorry, separate, separate the two TT loads apart, and B, help the backend compiler to uh, figure out a better interleaved instruction scheduling between global load instructions and uh, the compute. Um, as you can see in the generated uh, assembly code, the four out of the eight global instructions are now interleaved with MFMA instructions. So why not schedule the first TT load? 
because we want to keep the order of the load instructions with their users. And why not schedule both global load? Because if we, if we do so today, the, the backend the back uh, the back scheduler will put all eight global loads very close to the second barrier in the assembly code, which means there is not enough compute to hide the memory latency before the DS write, which is the user of the um, global load. So this brings up the, the ongoing collaboration between the Triton compiler team and the AMD GPU backend compiler team regarding a better low-level instruction scheduling. So here is the, so this table shows the um, uh, performance improvement with this IR level scheduling. We can get, we can get about 20% improvement when k equals to 4k and 8k, which corresponds to the, um, the, scenar the scenario where, uh, where the L1 cache hotspot happens. It, however, it doesn't help that much when k equals to 4160, which is 4k plus 64. Uh, in this case, uh, the, the stride of the non-k dimension is no longer a multiple of 5, 12 bytes, and the uh, other global loads can map to the four banks of I1 cache, leading to much shorter H latency anyway. Okay, the third one is about stream K. So the general idea about the stream K algorithm is when the, the tiles cannot be evenly distributed among the CUs, we reserve a number of CUs and uh, break up the K loop iterations, and then we distribute the uh, iterations evenly among the CUs. In this particular example, we have four CUs and uh, 18 tiles, and each tile has a K loop of four iterations. So we first uh, distribute the 16 tiles evenly among the four CUs, and for the remaining two, uh, for the remaining remaining two tiles, we distribute two iterations, two k-loop iterations uh, to each CU. As a result, we can achieve a much more balanced um, workload among the CUs. So this is very important for architecture like MI300, which has 304 CUs. So this is the performance of stream K algorithm compared to PyTorch. So this is showing two kernels for uh, 1,000 uh, gem sizes. Uh, which demonstrates the grid out of box performance um, of the stream uh, of the stream key algorithm. Okay, thank you. <laughs>